Kane is one of the most powerful characters in the amazing digital circus, which is why I will be surviving as him for the next 100 days in Minecraft. Using my incredible new powers, I will meet each member of the digital circus and search for my lost memories while turning into bigger and more powerful forms. Will I be able to stop the abstracted dragon or will I get abstracted myself? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into the amazing digital circus as Kane. All around me were the other circus members. How, how did we get here? I can't remember either. I've lost my memories. Suddenly, darkness gathered and the abstracted dragon appeared before us. It was the biggest abstraction I had ever seen. Lousy creatures, I can assure you that you won't forget me once I abstract all of you. The monster released a powerful abstraction beam as his abstracted minions appeared and attacked my friends and me. I knew I had to protect everyone. Run away! The circus members escaped while I tried to hold off the enemies with my cane. I was able to take down a few of them, but there were too many for me to defeat alone. If only I could remember how to use my full power! I vow to make this circus collapse! Get him, minions! I couldn't fight any longer, so I ran for my life while I still had the chance. On day two, I was being chased through the circus by the abstracted entities. I took every path I could, but soon enough, I was cornered! Come on, Kane! Use your awesome powers! Suddenly, I unleashed a firebolt attack that was able to defeat some of the abstracted monsters. That's more like it! With my new ability, I fought off the swarm the best I could, but another abstracted entity snuck up behind me. Look out! Before the monster was able to strike me, Bubble flew in and took him down with his sharp teeth. Bubble, for once I'm glad to see you. We didn't get to talk long before one of the abstracted snuck up on Bubble, causing his body to transform. He was now an abstracted Bubble and turned towards me to attack. I tried to defend myself with my fire blast power, but he was 10 times stronger than any of the other abstracted entities I had been fighting. I couldn't keep up. I've got to get out of here. I looked up and noticed a door floating high above me. I flew into it and tried to escape the abstracted bubble. On day three, I arrived in another room to find a mysterious orb at the center. What's that? It feels familiar. Familiar. By instinct, I flew over and grabbed the orb, causing me to be sent into a flashback. When I came to, I was at the grounds, building the tent with my own two hands. When I'm done with this place, I'll be able to have all kinds of wacky adventures. Eventually, I put the finishing touches on the circus tent, and I stood proudly over my work. It's finished! I think I'll call this the amazing digital circus! I snapped back to reality and remembered some of my past. That's right! I built this place with my own two hands! I need to collect more of these orbs and find out more of my memories! Suddenly, my body transformed. I grew bigger in size and obtained an even more powerful cane. I had five more hearts and the rest of my magician powers. Just then, a Distracted bubble broke into the room. It's dinner time! Oh no you don't! I'm going to make you see the light! I charged, ready to face off against my old pal. On days four through five, I was facing off against my abstracted friend. As I flew around, Bubble summoned abstracted tentacles from the ground to trap me. They even blinded me. I escaped their grasps and summoned meteors down onto my abstracted friend. Take this! I hit him with my fire chain powers and defeated him. He transformed back into his normal body. Uh, being abstracted feels 
awful. Thanks for saving me. Take this. He handed me some food to take with me on my journey. Ooh, pumpkin pie. My third favorite pie. Amazing. The other circus members are in danger, and you're the only one who can help them. Then I better start searching for my friends. I headed to the grounds where I could begin my search. However, I quickly discovered that Pomni was stuck on a roller coaster. Help! Oh no! My newest pal! Hang in there! After this long-winded comment, I will surely save you! On days six through seven, I flew towards the roller coaster to find Pomni stuck spinning in circles as she raced around the tracks. I can't leave this cart! Get me out of here! Don't worry! The amazing and handsome Kane is here to save the day! Just save me already! I flew in front of the speeding cart and tried to stop it using my raw strength, but instead it rammed me off the rails and I took damage from the fall. Well, that didn't work. Surely there's an off switch around here. I looked around and discovered a lever surrounded by signs that said off switch. Wow, that's convenient. I flipped the switch, but instead of bringing the cart to a stop, a part of the track exploded. Uh, oops. <laughs> Pomni flew off the rails and towards her doom. Uh-oh. I used fast thinking and created a body of water for Pomni to land in. Her cart crashed into the pond, but the water saved her from taking fall damage. Are you okay? <gasps> No, I almost died multiple times. I'm not okay. What is this place anyway? Oh, I just learned this one. I built this place. It's called the Amazing Digital Circus. Wait, how can you just learn about a place that you built? Uh, hey, look, a distraction. <laughs> As if on cue, abstracted entities came running towards us. Ah, I just want to leave. Pomni and I ran for our lives. I can try something. I focused and used my powers to create an exit door in front of us. Finally, I'm out of here. Pomni, wait! She ignored me and walked through the door, only to end up falling straight into the void. I hurried after her so she wouldn't get hurt. On days 10 through 12, I followed Pomni into the void to find that she was okay for now. What is this place? Doesn't matter. We have to get out of here. The void is dangerous! Suddenly, the abstracted dragon appeared before us. Trying to leave so soon? The fun has only just begun! The dragon unleashed his beam attack onto Omni, causing her to abstract into a horrible monster. <laughs> Have fun fighting your friends! The abstracted dragon vanished, and Pomni attacked me. She used her new void powers on me, firing a quick barrage that gave me a withering effect. It was a battle of the magicians. I tried to fend her off with my own arcane attacks, but she was too powerful for me to fight alone. I'm sorry I let you down! Suddenly, Bubble arrived. Don't give up yet! Catch! Bubble threw me a magic scroll upgrade. I grabbed it and gained the ability to use summoning powers. Take this! Armed with my new ability, I started summoning Vexes around me to attack Pomni. Along with the Vexes, I also attacked Pomni with everything I had. She took the hits and returned back to normal. What happened? And... What's this? I noticed that she had a memory orb in her hand. She immediately threw it towards me. I grabbed it and was sent into another flashback. On days 13 through 15, I was in a flashback where I was having a feast with a friendly dragon. Dig in, Draco! Don't mind if I do. We started munching on the food and we both enjoyed our time together. You're my best friend. Let's keep having fun together in the tent. Of course, buddy old pal. I return to reality with even more questions than before. Draco, who's that? I need to find the rest of my memories. I used my power 
hours to escape the void with Pomni and Bubble. We returned to the tent and regrouped. Thanks for saving me again. Sorry for being so reckless. I just want to go home. It's okay. I'll do my best to keep all of the circus members safe. Suddenly, I heard the sound of music coming from down the hall. I wasn't sure why, but I had a bad feeling about it. I better check that out. I left Pomni behind with Bubble and went to investigate the source of the music. On days 16 to 18, I arrived at the source of the music at the stage. There was an abstracted entity playing music for a crowd of mannequins while Jax was trapped in a cage behind him. Oh no, they have Jax! I need to save him! I tried to sneak my way through the audience, but suddenly I was hit by a spotlight and I was instantly seen. Ah, it looks like someone has come for the show. Unfortunately, you don't have tickets. I flew towards him trying to end the fight fast, but he began to attack me with his magical music spells. With the help of his cursed song, the conductor summoned glitched fish to rush at me. I did my best to avoid them and rushed for his main body, aiming every attack I did at him. The other creatures were a nuisance though, causing my main attacks to not be as effective. I needed help. I can summon things too. With a twirl of my staff, I called for spirits to swarm around me and fight off his horde of summons while I went for his main body. As we fought one another, our battle spilled out into the crowd. Many of the mannequins were set ablaze. I have to strike him at the source or he'll never stop. I dodged and weaved closer and closer towards the abstracted conductor. Finally, I made it within striking distance and hit him with my meteor attack. Instantly, he died with one last bow before sinking into the floor. I quickly went over to break Jax out of his prison. Are you okay? Music. <laughs> Follow the music. You were always an odd one, Jax, but this is strange even for you. Music! Closer. Suddenly, he had Extracted into a monster. The music had possessed him. On days 19 to 22, I was under attack by the abstracted Jax. He led with a bunch of slashes and what seemed to be dart needles that dug into me, damaging me greatly. In defense, I struck back with my fire bolts and chains, but he easily shrugged them off. As we fought, he began to fire off black holes of pure darkness. One of the attacks hit the crowd, killing some mannequins. I couldn't let the crowd get swept away in the mayhem. I made a run for it, leading him off the stage and into a wider area. All the meanwhile, he continued to send needles and slashes into my direction. I tried to use my magic meteor attack to snap him out of it, but nothing seemed to work. Jax, stop! It's me, your friend Kane! Music! He hit me with an abstracted black hole, severely hurting me. I couldn't get through to him. This is bad. It would be nice to have some help right now. Just as Jax was about to strike me again, Ragatha appeared. Leave him alone. She used her thunder punch attack to stun Jax in place. I will stay here and keep him stunned. Find the music box and that will return him to normal. I'm on it. Try to stay alive. I flew away in search of the music box in hopes to get Jax to snap out of it. On days 23 to 26, I arrived at a maze, but before I could enter, a magic book stopped me. Hiya, welcome to the mighty maze. If you're able to pass through, you'll get the amazing music box. Did you say music box? Sign me right up, mysterious talking book. I tried to fly over the maze, but the book shot me down with a powerful lightning attack. No cheating! I guess I have to do this the old-fashioned way. I went through the maze in search of the exit. As I walked, the hallways twisted and turned turned in every direction, quickly becoming disorienting. I turned the corner and saw some sheep having a dance party. That's interesting. Next, I spotted a skeleton watching TV. Do you mind? This place is weird. I turned the corner and found a yard with a house at the end of it. Suddenly, an angry minotaur came running from behind the house. Get off my lawn! Ah! 
I was being chased by the ferocious Minotaur until I finally reached the exit. I had won. I beat the maze. The book from before appeared in front of me. Congratulations. Here's your prize. He handed me the music box and suddenly I heard Ragatha scream. Ah! I hurried to make sure she was okay. On days 27 to 30, I arrived back to Ragatha where I saw Jax was now resistant to the lightning punch. He was closing in on her. Get away from her! I placed the music box and turned it on near Jax, letting the music capture his attention. It caused him to stop and transform back to normal. Well, hey, thanks for saving me. I don't know much to give you except this weird orb I found. Everyone loves orbs. He handed me another memory orb. I grabbed it and got transported into another flashback. There, I was standing with Draco watching. All right, buddy, I have a little surprise for you. Suddenly, Jax, Ragatha, Gangle, Kinger, and Zubal appeared on stage. I've brought new friends to play with us. New friends? But this place is supposed to be for us two. But I need to be alone. He stormed off, and I woke up back in reality. I brought the others here to have more company, but Draco didn't seem to like that. Suddenly, I transformed into my third form. I gained five hearts and now could telekinetically control my staffs to deal massive damage. Each memory makes me stronger. I better keep learning more about my past. Just then, the floor opened under Ragatha and she fell into a pit. I hurried after her. On days 31 to 34, I followed Ragatha down into the darkness below to find myself in the cellar. I've got a bad feeling about this place. Suddenly, abstracted entities jumped down all around us, ready to attack. Yep, I was right. I used my new telekinetic staff attacks to fight them off. Thanks to my upgrade, I was able to take them down quickly. I'm much stronger than before, but I have to hurry. Who knows what's down here? I searched around until I saw Ragatha, but when I approached her, she turned around, and I realized I was already too late. Join us, Kane. Suddenly, she fully abstracted into a monster. I was forced to flee and lock Ragatha into the cellar. I need to find a way to cure her. Suddenly, I saw a gloink hopping by and decided to follow it. On days 35 through 38, I followed the gloinks to their nest where I saw them gathering materials into a large pile. Something useful has to be there. I was about to go towards it when the gloink queen emerged. Oh, okay. She she looks like bad news. I better stay hidden. I snuck around the gloink nest, hiding behind rubble to stay covered. Finally, I made it to the pile and began to search it. I've got something. I pulled it out and realized I had Zubal's head. <laughs> the gloink queen heard our screams and turned towards me. Who dares to trespass on my nest? On days 39 to 42, the gloink queen confronted me and Zubal. You have no right to be digging through my pile of treasures. Please, I just need to help my friend here. You know what friends are, right? Nonsense. You'll pay for this. She attacked me and Zubal. I dodged out of the way, but she ended up eating Zubal whole. Zubal! I attacked the Gloink Queen with my new telekinetic staff hours. She fought back, releasing mighty roars that ripped through the air. But I was not going to let her get away with what she did to my friend. I used my fire powers, blasting them and the surrounding area before unleashing my vicious chain attacks. She wouldn't go down, firing deadly lasers that hurt a lot. I used my spinning telekinetic staff attack once more to defeat her. She dropped Zubal's head upon her death. Whoa, that was nasty. Here, take this potion. This is just what I needed to save Ragatha. Time for a rescue mission. On days 43 through 46, I returned to the cellar where I found Ragatha waiting. Oh, you came back. Join, Join us, Kane. Join you? I'm flattered. But no, I'm bringing you back. 
Ragatha began running at me with the intent to kill. Quickly, I twirled my staff and summoned many vexes that came to my aid. Ragatha fired a purple beam of energy that exploded everything it came into contact with. I used my strongest meteors on her, hoping to stun her, and it worked. I took the opportunity to throw the potion at her. Reeling from my attacks and the potion, Ragatha began to transform back to normal. Oh, my head. Sorry, Ragatha, but I didn't really have a choice. It's okay. Thanks for saving me. Oh, yeah, I found this strange orb. I feel like it might help you. Ragatha tossed the orb to me, and as soon as I caught it, I was transported into another flashback. I took in my surroundings and realized I was back in the tent. Draco came running up to me suddenly. Kane, come quick. I found something. I followed close behind Draco, and he led me to an exit door. Huh, that's odd. This place isn't supposed to have any exits. Cautiously, I walked through the doorway, only to find myself in the void. What is this place? This is the void. We must never venture out here. But... No buts! Let's get out of here! We turned back through the door and returned to reality back inside of the tent. The void has always been such a dangerous place. Draco seemed pretty curious about it though. Did he do something reckless? I found myself back in the cellar as I gained five more hearts and unlocked my lightning magic. I did not have a lot of time to get settled though as a group of abstracted began charging towards us out of the dark. Reacting quickly, I teleported us back to safety. For the days of 47 to 50, Ragatha and I appeared back in the tent, where Zubal was already waiting for us. Ah, it worked. Welcome back. Thanks, but the others are still in danger. We need to find them. I think I know where Kanger is, but I can't remember without the rest of my body. Do you think you can find the rest of my parts? Leave it to me, Zubal! I set off and began exploring the tent in search of Zubal's lost body parts. After a little bit of looking, I managed to locate one of them at the top of the trapeze act. Nice. Good thing I can fly. I quickly grabbed them. Next, I went out and tried to check the outside of the tent. I spotted the arms on a carousel at the island's amusement park. Well now, this might come in handy. Two for one, I guess. Before I left, I also noticed a strange glowing sticker and grabbed it. I better take this too. Afterwards, I continued searching outside, finally seeing the last part laying on the ground. But before I was able to grab it, an abstracted boar ran by and gobbled it up. Hey, that's not yours. The abstracted boar turned its attention to me and began running straight my way. On days 51 through 54, I was fighting an abstracted boar, hoping to get Zubal's part back. As the abstracted boar approached, it blasted me with a shadow ball attack that teleported me close to him. I attacked back, using my staff to my advantage. Its brute strength was almost overwhelming. I needed assistance. I twirled my staff and summoned my companion Vexes. They took some of the blows for me and attacked the boar. He slashed at them with his shadow tusks, breaking the ground with his massive hooves while he was at it. Then, with a shadow vortex, he managed to take some of them down. I used the moment to call forth my chains. They dug into him and exploded. He was finally weak. I took the opportunity and killed him with my telekinetic spinning staff. As the abstracted died, Zubal's part fell from its mouth. But it was strange and abstracted now. Eh, it's probably fine. Five minute rule. I grabbed Zubal's last piece and began making my way back to the tent. I turned to Zubal quickly, tossing the missing pieces their way. Here you go, buddy. Thanks. Zubal absorbed the missing pieces, but something seemed wrong. Hey, I... Uh... That's weird. I don't feel so good. Suddenly, Zubal transformed into an abstracted monster. Kane. Uh-oh, that abstracted body part must have infected them. Abstracted Zubal lashed out, the transformation having taken them over. On days 55 to 58, I was fending off an abstracted Zubal. They shot a barrage of abstraction bolts at me, causing some serious harm. I fought back with my lightning powers, but it didn't even register the hits. Give in to the abstraction, Kane. Join us. 
They rained down abstraction bolts all around me. I was in some serious trouble and needed to think of something quick. Desperately, I suddenly remembered the glowing sticker I found on the carousel. Well, it's not like I have anything to lose. I used the glowing sticker on the abstracted Zubal, and much to my surprise, they transformed back to normal. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, what's this doing here? Zubal tossed me another memory orb. Oh, wow, another orb. Again, I found myself in a vision. I began searching around the tent frantically. Drake! Go! Where are you? I spotted another exit door, and it was open. Oh no! Did he go into that void? I specifically told him we don't go there. I'll have to go save him now. I ran through the exit door, but instead of ending up in the void, I realized I was back in reality, having snapped out of the vision. That's right. I remember now. Draco went into the void. I need to find out what happened to him. I used my magic to transport myself into the void, hoping to finally get to the bottom of this. For days 59 to 62, I finally arrived in the void, finding nothing except for a single door adrift in the nothingness. Well, that sure wasn't there before. I made my way through the door, ending up on the inside of a castle. Looking around, I spotted Kinger hiding. Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's just me, buddy. What's wrong. The enemy forces are closing in on my castle, and my army is nowhere to be seen. Ah! I was trying to calm Kinger down when the castle wall behind us exploded, and an army of shadow knights began to flood into the castle. Capture this place, man. Leave nothing behind. I began fighting off the shadow knights, but there were just too many of them. I needed backup, and fast. Otherwise, we were going to get overrun. Run while you still can, Kane. Fight my army, then come back and save me! I knew Kinger was right. I was forced to flee, but promised to search for his men and return to save him. For the days of 63 through 66, I was searching the area for Kinger's missing army. After a bit of searching, I found them in a shooting range. What the? What are you guys doing out here? Your castle is under attack. Your king needs you. Kinger, Psh, who cares? What? That's no way to talk about your leader. And who are you again? Why should we even listen to you? I bet you couldn't even beat us in our own target game. Oh yeah? I'll show you. Challenge accepted. Eager to prove them wrong, I lined up along the target range, facing off against one of the other enemy members. All right, listen up. Whoever gets the most bullseyes win. Got it? Okay, ready, go. I watched in amazement as the army member went first, landing three perfect shots in a row. <laughs> Beat that, punk. I took a second to line myself up with my target, took a deep breath, and then used my fireball, completely destroying the target altogether. No way. Well, I'll be. Listen, we're sorry for doubting you. That's right you are. Now you better listen to me. Otherwise, you'll end up like that target back there. You better go save Kinger right now. Y yes, sir. Men, let's go. Double time. Having proven myself, I began my return to the castle to save Kinger with my new allies. On days 67 through 70, we arrived back at the castle. It was absolutely infested with enemy forces. All right, men, this is it. Let's reclaim this castle. Ready? Charge! I led the attack on the castle, eager to save Kinger and take back what was ours. We continued to fight our way through the halls, finding reaching the throne room. Unfortunately, Kinger was captured, trapped inside of a cage. The enemy leader was waiting for us. Well, well, well. Looks like your pathetic army has arrived after all. <laughs> no matter. You can't stop me. Without warning, the leader attacked, roaring in a rage and swinging his war axe wildly. I fought back, countering with my own attacks, calling forth my chains and landing a substantial blow. Ha, not too bad for a floating loudmouth, that is. Enough playing around, though. I'm gonna punch your teeth in. 
The red leader screeched again, empowering himself before he swung, twirling in the air and bringing his axe down with crushing force. I was able to dodge out of the way just in time. I don't think so, pal. I swooped in behind him and landed a major hit with my lightning powers, knocking the red leader out. Having made short work of the enemy forces, I made my way over to Free Kinger. What took so long? I mean, thanks for saving me. Sorry, that was really scary. The wall behind us suddenly exploded, raining down all over the floor. I looked up to see the abstracted dragon looming over us. Ah, but the fun has only just begun. At last, you will have a taste of your own medicine. The abstracted dragon shot Kinger with a corrupted attack, causing him to become an abstracted. On days 71 through 74, I was under attack by an abstracted Kinger, while the abstracted dragon watched on from above us. Kinger, snap out of it! Kinger lunged forward and attacked me with void bombs, blowing up the throne room in the process. Ugh, it's no use! Sorry, Kinger! With no other choice, I retaliated, using my meteors and staves in an attempt to knock some sense into him. He attacked back relentlessly with his void tentacles and bites. Come on, Kinger! Snap out of it! I don't want to hurt you! Kinger launched another attack, but I was able to dodge it. That's it! Men, charge! Hearing my order, my army of allies came rushing in to aid my fit. Overwhelming Kinger, we were finally able to get him to break free from the abstracted dragon's control. What? No! Impossible! Ugh. You will all suffer for this! I'll make sure of it! What's your problem? Why do you hate us so much? <laughs> I guess it's time for you to finally remember everything. The abstracted dragon threw down another memory orb, landing right on top of me. In an instant, I was caught in another flashback. I was disoriented, making my way through the void, searching for Draco. I finally found him, standing alone in the nothingness. Draco, what are you doing here? I was very clear. We don't go to the void. It's too dangerous here! Kane, you've replaced me, so now I'm going to make all of you pay! Suddenly, he began abstracting right before my eyes, transforming into the abstracted dragon. No! Draco! It can't be! You created this monster, Kane! Die! As Draco blasted me with his abstracted beam, I snapped back to reality, having remembered the horrible truth. No! Draco! You were my friend! It was your jealousy that abstracted you! Please! Stop! All of this is a misunderstanding! No, Kane! I'll never listen to you ever again! In a fury, the abstracted dragon swooped down to attack me. On days 75 through 78, I was being attacked by the abstracted dragon. His powers were destroying the castle all around him. I was not going to stand a chance against him. I didn't have any other choice. Everyone, listen! We can't win this! Retreat! We ran as fast as we could, desperate to escape from the abstracted dragon. That's right, Kane. Run while you can. You will soon be abstracted, just like me. After a bit of running, we finally found a safe spot, where Zubal, Ragatha, Jax, and Pomni were already waiting. Guys, listen! I have something to tell you! With a heavy heart, I told them about how I remembered everything, and explained that the abstracted dragon was an old friend of mine, and had been corrupted by evil. There has to be a way to cure him then, just like you did with us! But how can we do that? You saw him, he's too powerful! Gangle wouldn't know how. Well, she knows something at least. We just need to find her. Then there's no time to waste! I took off, leaving the group behind to search for Gangle. It was our only chance at stopping the abstracted dragon. For the days of 79 to 82, I searched all over the circus in search of Gangle. Eventually, I found a room where everything was giant. Whoa, everything is so big. It's like a whole house in here. Wait, maybe I'm just really tired.
tiny. I looked around the giant house, but still saw no sign of my ribbon friend. Gango, are you in here? I know much better places to cry than in here. As I searched the massive kitchen, water started to pour from above me. Soon, giant pillars of water flooded down, sweeping me away in a current. No, I hate baths. When the rapid water ride finally came to an abrupt stop, I realized I had washed up next to a giant gangle. The water falling down was Gangle crying. I flew up to him to see what was going on. Gangle, what's wrong, fella? You're flooding up all the good real estate down there. Oh, I can't. It's just this room made me giant, and now I'm too big to leave. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to return to normal size again. Oh, don't worry about something like that. I can fix you up, no problem. Not wasting any time, I used my amazing powers to shrink Gangle, but none of my amazing spells worked on her. This might be tougher than I thought. I knew it. I'll be stuck like this forever. We can't give up yet. There has to be a cure around here somewhere. Hang in there while I look around. Gangle continued to cry as I went off to find some sort of cure hiding in the room. On days 83 through 86, I searched high and low for some some sort of cure amongst the massive furniture. Eventually, I found a lone potion on the ground. This looks promising. It's even normal sized. I went to grab the bottle, but before I could react, a little gloink popped up out of nowhere, snatching the potion up first. What the? Hey, get back here. I immediately took off, chasing after the little gloink. But to my surprise, he was much faster than me. All right, no more Mr. Nice Mouth. Take this. I used my fire bolts on the little thief, but it just bounced out of the way. Okay, new plan. As I chased the gloink, I continued to use power after power on it till it bounced itself all the way into a corner. Before it even realized it was trapped, I took the chance to finish the little guy off and claim the potion. Serves you right. Now that I had a cure, I quickly returned to the giant gangle and gave it to her. Oh, thanks, Keen. Bottoms up. She drank it, but instead of returning to normal, gangle morphed into a giant abstracted monster. The potion was a trap. Now, wait a second. Maybe this doesn't have to turn into a fight. Not listening, Gangle immediately attacked me. On days 87 through 90, I was under attack by the abstracted Gangle. She used a void beam on me, but I was able to dodge it, retaliating with my own firebolts. Gangle, snap out of it. It's me, Kane. It didn't seem like my words were even registering as Gangle continued the battle, unleashing a starfall attack. This isn't good. I can't keep this up. I need to think of something fast. My eyes darted around the room as I continued to dodge Gangle's onslaught. I summoned my vexes and they swarmed in to attack the abstraction. In the next moment, I spotted another magic scroll. I quickly grabbed the scroll and as I did, I gained five more hearts and unlocked my magic ice power. Hours. Looks like it's gonna be a bit chilly today. I attacked Gangle once more, now cutting into them with razor sharp icicles before finally she was defeated and transformed back to normal. Oh, I'm normal again. Oh, th thank you, Gain. No problem, Gangle. I'm just happy you're okay. I need your help though. I took a second to catch my breath and explain the situation and that I needed a cure for the abstracted dragon. I see here. I've found this map. Maybe it'll help you find the cure. Thanks, Gangle. I'll take any lead I can. I took the map and made my way along its course in hopes that I'd find the cure I needed. On days 91 through 93, I followed the map, which led me to an empty room. Here it is. Wait, this can't be right. Where's the cure? <laughs> you fool! You actually fell for it! The abstracted dragon appeared right before me! Draco, listen to me! I know you're in there somewhere! You have to stop all this! No, Kane! Draco has been 
been lost for a long time now. No, I don't believe it. I know you're still in there. I'm going to find a cure, Draco. I'm going to fix this. Draco is no more. I am the abstracted dragon now. And soon, you will be abstracted too. The abstracted dragon blasted me with a void beam. It was too much for me to bear, and I felt myself fading. I will fight until the very end. Suddenly, everything went dark. For the days of 94 to 96, I came to in a strange realm. Oh, my head. Where am I? You're inside of a dream, Bronzo. Standing before me was an abstracted version of myself. What the? I don't understand. It's okay, Bronzo. Give in to the darkness. You know you want to. What? No, I just want all my friends to be happy, including Draco. How noble of you, but also foolish. Your journey ends here, Bronzo. The abstracted version of myself attacked using a volley of violet void energy. Desperately, I fought back using my arcane powers, shooting lightning and fire, but we seemed evenly matched. Give up, Bronzo. You can't win. You you won't beat me! I'll show you how strong I really am! Remembering my friends, and especially Draco, I rallied myself and used my new meteors, blasting the abstracted Bronzo. No! As he died, I appeared back inside of the tent. The cure was now in my inventory. I did it! I got the cure! Time to gather everyone and make our final plan of attack. With renewed hope, I made my way back to my friends. On days 97 and 98, I had almost made my way back to my friends with a cure for Draco, when Ragatha ran up to me in a panic. Bronzo! Ragatha, I was just heading back to you guys. What's wrong? I think you're gonna need to see this for yourself. Ragatha led me back to where my friends were waiting. The ground and everything around was turning black. Everything was becoming abstracted. Oh no, the abstracted dragon is getting stronger. We need to hurry. We have to stop him before it's too late. You're right, we do. And that's why we all got together to give you this. She handed me a golden talisman, which shot beams of light energy. This should make you strong enough to resist any darkness the abstracted dragon throws your way. Thanks, Ragatha. Agatha, this will. Suddenly, the ground began to shake as a giant hole opened up in front of us. Abstracted entities began swarming out of the hole. This is it, everyone. It's time to fight. Prepare yourselves. On day 99, we were all fighting off the army of abstracted entities. They swarmed me as I fought with my magic powers. I had grown so much over my journey that their attacks did little damage to me, and I had my friends to back me up as I fought. Nice try. Take this! I used my powers to make quick work of the horde. As I thinned out the enemy numbers, a giant abstracted entity stepped forward to attack. Bronzo, listen, we'll take care of these little pipsqueaks. You just focus on the big guy, all right? Sounds like a plan to me. As my friends fought the remaining stragglers, I turned my attention to the large beast in front of me. All right, looks like it's just you and me. The giant abstracted charged forward. It was heavy, and I shot back using all of my magical powers. It was a tough fight. We traded blows with each other over and over until I finally was able to defeat Defeat it with one final electric blow. Your forces are defeated. Do you hear me, Draco? Come on, come face me one on one. Without any warning, a portal appeared right above me and sucked me inside. On day 100, I appeared back in the void where the abstracted dragon was waiting for me. Give up your little resistance. This ends here. Never! Not until I get my friend back! Your friend is dead! And soon, you will be too! He used his abstraction blast, but thanks to the buff my friends gave me, I hung on, retaliating with my own beams of light against the darkness. I used my telekinetic staff powers in hopes to bring Draco down, but he was still too strong. I released a blast of my cold power, but it didn't even affect him. Quickly, I summoned my wisps to help me out, distracting and taking some of the hits. But he was too powerful, and they fell quickly. We began shooting beams at each other, 
each other in a desperate bid to get the upper hand, and I was struck by his powerful abstraction bolts. It doesn't have to be like this! Yes, it does! You must pay for this pain you caused me! The abstracted dragon used another abstraction black hole attack, but luckily, I dodged it. He was left completely open. No! I'm bringing my friend back! I threw the cure at him. Ah! He transformed back into Draco. My friend was saved. I'm sorry for everything. I care about you and everyone else. Thanks, Kane. You're my best friend. I'll never hurt you again. And I'll never hurt you, Draco. I'm glad everything worked out in the end. Kane!